Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It is the 29th of April, Asia time. Thanks very much for being here. Topics I've got on the agenda for today include news, Google Summer of Code, SheCode Africa Contributhon. We should probably also include Jenkins 2.332.3 LTS change log and upgrade guide. Um, let's see. Ongoing prep for June LTS. That's worth discussing. Baseline selection. Uh, rough draft or review of changes since 2.332.3.x. Any other topics? Chris, were there topics that were specific for you that, oh, we should, maybe we should talk about localization, localization, uh, internationalization, and localization meetup? May 12, and crowd in is the thing. Any other topics? Mm, no. Okay. Not for me, good. Great. All right. So, by way of news, we've got a weekly 2.345 has been released. Um, and let's see, other, other items that's I think that's the big one. Google Summer of Code. So we are in the uh, proposal evaluation by, potent by potential mentors. And that is due by end of this week. Is that right, Chris? I think so, yeah. And org admins, oh, go ahead, excuse me. I think so, yeah, by end of this week. Then org admins um, do further further review, prioritization, and submit to Google. And then Google selection selected projects are announced in May, right? Yes. So we, we wish everyone all the best. We look forward to that and hope we have several selected for Jenkins. Chris, anything else you wanted to mention on Google Summer of Code? Um, no. Okay. She Code Africa Contributhon is ongoing. So the inclusive naming project has found several places that need Updates. So this is the word master be, needs to be changed to controller. The word slave needs to be changed to agent. A blacklist to a better phrase where the better mm -hmm. phrase depends on the context. And likewise for whitelist, whitelist. They were, those two were never particularly helpful phrases. We use them as secret keywords to describe mm -hmm. The, a meaning of something that's been banned or not banned or specifically allowed. Then the, the screenshot updates project uh, has found many screenshot many screenshots that need updating. And they're using Jenkins weekly to create the screenshot so that they are close to what June LTS will look like. That means they're actually a little different than what the current LTS looks like. Cool. Yeah, and I'm I that was a we've had fun with doing that one because finding the pictures and then taking them. I did a demonstration today and in the demonstration today promptly showed 
why it's difficult to create screenshots correctly by taking exactly the wrong screenshot and creating a pull request with it. So fix that. Update you are the... such a good teacher, Mark. Right. The sacrifices you make for your students are showing showing by total hypocrisy, complete failure. This is how you fail to do the task. Mm -hmm. And then let's let's fix the damage. The pipeline help project was somewhat of a struggle today because um, we picked a plug in that was difficult to add help. And uh, so I've got, we've got more work to do to find places and examples there. Any questions on the Sheikot Africa Contributhon? It ends, ends mid-May, uh, then two weeks of, two weeks of wrap up of conclusion and final reports. How are the participants going, doing though? Are they having fun or are they? I think I think they are. It's a little slower than it was last year, and but I think there we've had everyone's plans and ideas reset as necessary to be sure. Look, we're here to learn about open source together. We're going to show you some things that may surprise you. You're going to learn some things. We're going to learn some things, and that's those have turned out to be positive. Good, good. All right. Next topic then was the Jenkins LTS change log and upgrade guide. The PR has been submitted. Uh, reviews are encouraged. And the PR is at, I should put it, paste it in here just so that everybody's got it if that helps them. Yeah, here it is. And if I remember correctly, you have to look at the screenshot. The preview doesn't work because previews are only available for weeklies, not for the LTS previews. Okay. So look at the picture, but the picture is included. Any questions on that LTS change log and upgrade guide? Nope. Yep. Okay, so next topic is the ongoing prep for the June LTS. And this is a big one because there are significant UI changes. Really grateful to, to Jan Faracik and to Tim Jacome for their work, for Basil Crow's work, for um, Alex Brandes, for three or four other contributors who've all been involved in UI improvements in since 2.332.x. Oh, we've got one more item, which is require Java 11 is now planned for the September 2022 LTS. All right. So Java 8 end of support by the Jenkins project. Any questions or concerns there? Are the SheCode Africa people, while they're looking at screenshots watching, I think most of the Java 8 stuff is gone, but are they watching for it? They are not. not it's she been, it's been, that's a good suggestion. I'll, I don't know that they are, they would be able to detect which things would be would be Java eight specific and which wouldn't? But it's Unless worth. It's also, like you said, Java eight. Because like for text, we can always do Git grep to find any exactly. But it misses the screenshots. Ah, yeah, good point. Although that seems likely that if it's got something that's Java specific in a screenshot, it's probably, yeah, it, I, I suspect it'll. Be, be detected, but I'll remind them. Good suggestion. Thanks. Yeah. Even if they Good. just flag them for now as suspicious or. Right, exactly. Just adding them because what I've got is we've created a sheet of screenshots that we of pages. And then as we as they visit a page, they mark, does it need a, a screenshot update or not? Okay, yeah. So the idea is we'll use that list even if they don't get through all the pages themselves, that list could be used for others to do screenshot updates. Oh yeah. 
Okay. Any other questions on the Java 11, Java 8 end of support, the require Java 11 project? Okay, so last topic then for me is internationalization and localization. I've got to show you this one. Uh, Chris, I believe you're a native speaker of, of Chinese, aren't you? Oh, uh, yep. Okay, so then you are an interesting candidate for this uh, one, if you would be willing to, to help us with the experiment. So this is crowdin.jenkins.io. What it is, is a localization facilitation service that submits pull requests to Jenkins plugins with translations. Oh, okay. So, so what, what we've done here, this is, okay, admittedly, this is not a very popular plugin. We intentionally used one that was not popular so that, so that no one would be dismayed. Or if you want a popular and very interesting plugin, design library plugin. And what, what it allows is it allows a contributor to contribute translations in, through a web user interface instead of contributing them through heroic efforts that they have to do by editing property files. Now, I don't, it doesn't offer any machine generated translations into Chinese traditional, and I'm not sure why, because for example, if I do the same thing in Italian, it actually offers me, uh, come on, come on. It will offer me machine generated translations. So I'm not sure if they just don't do multi-byte really well or, or what it is, but we're certainly interested in feedback from people. How does this feel? How does it work for them, for, for people who are native language speakers? Do we have anything in a different alphabet? Uh, well, Japanese, so, Russian, Ukrainian? Uh, I, good question. Let's see what else we've got. So we don't have any, let me look to see if maybe maybe design library plugin has some multi-byte translation. Just a minute. Because I, I, I'm not sure that I know there's none in, whoops, that I know there's none in the, no, none, none have been translated yet. So yeah. there's nothing multi-byte here. And we're doing it with just plugins for now, just to get an understanding of yeah. what, what does it mean? Oh, oh, no, look, there it is. It's offering a translation. Okay. Oh, my. So, okay. Now, Chris, while you're here, can I have you look at these machine generated translations? Do Great. either of those look reasonable to you? Um, the first one is okay, but the second one looks kind of weird. Okay. All right. Interesting. So, so this one didn't so, look unreasonable to you. Yeah, it looks okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, so that's, that's, I'm going to dare to save that because okay. now this one, oh, hey, they got it right here. When we did a German translation earlier today, the, the code L colon main panel end oh. code thing was incorrectly translated into local language. Now, do ah. any of those look reasonable, Chris? Um, yeah. Mm, I think they look similar, except um, let me see which which one's the best one. Mm. I, I think the third and fourth ones are quite similar. Yeah, and as I look at three and four, I, the only difference I see, now my, I don't have, I certainly don't read multivite main dash packer versus main dash panel and main dash panel is the correct one, at least for the non-translated string. I think the second one is the best. 
second one. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this because now this gives a chance. If you're interested later, Chris, you could register with this site. And I think you may be able to make yourself a proofreader and yeah, then come in, come in and say, hey, look, it did it. And then within 12 hours, a pull request will be submitted to the plugin proposing that localization. Okay. Okay. Cool. And, it, and it comes by GitHub pull requests, which mean which means we then we just use standard pull request processes to to manage it. So I can show you one that I just processed today from Schedule Build plugin. Okay. It came in looking like this. New crowd in translations. Okay. And here's what changed. The section title, I kept it schedule build plugin and then orario predefinito di costruzione pianificazione, which is some sort of Italian. Okay. And zona oraria is actually pretty close, at least for the limited Italian that I do. So I'm I've been really impressed we're going to do a session on this may 12th and show show people one how do you internationalize and then two how do you use crowd in to encourage others to help you translate into local language cool yeah i i am i am really impressed and thanks to crowd in enterprise they've given us the license for free so we we get all sorts of benefits from what they're willing to let us use. They're hosting the service. All we do is, is hook it up to our repositories and they'll submit pull requests. Wow. So we'll have a time when say Simplified Chinese will be partially, you'll look at it and some will be in English and some will be translated. We already have that, right? Oh, okay. So there, there are plenty of cases where we have we have um, actually, and I can go ahead and proofread this. I'm going to say yes to both of them because Chris was here. Right. So, so we already have that kind of partial experience today. What this will do is allow people to help us make more and more of the strings translated into local language. Right. So what if one of the ones that isn't well translated, can, you, can they go in and change it? Can they reword or edit it or something? I think so. I think that this gives them a facility to say, hey, I'd like to alter something here. So whoops, I clicked the wrong thing. I need to click instead of proofreading. If I click crowdsource here, then I could change this to be a uh, piano. Ah. And, and it it does allow corrections. Now, in my case, I definitely don't want to correct that. At least as far as I can tell it does. Now we're, we're still learning. Uh, this was first introduced to me by a student in Germany, Alexander Brandes, who's been actively involved in UI improvements. And it's, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Any other topics we should review today? Okay, well, that was that's pretty simple. Uh, we could look at some old PRs. Unfortunately, Meg, I'm not, I've not got capacity right now to make any progress on old PRs, so I'm hesitant Understood. to bring them back in. We've certainly got lots. There are 38 open, a um, couple of proposed blog posts, et cetera. Now, actually, I guess there is one. Do any, are any of you Mac OS users? Not willingly. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Chris, did you say you are, or was that a no? Yes, yes, yeah, I do. Oh, okay. So, so Chris, if you'd be willing, I need somebody who's got access to Mac OS who can see if, if this proposed phrasing makes sense. I'm not a Mac OS user and me approving it feels, feels like I could make things worse rather than better by saying yes. 
So what they're describing is something about how to make user local bin accessible to a Docker image. And that surprises me in all sorts of ways. So I don't quite know what to think of it. If, if you were, would be willing to review that, do you mind if I tag you in this just to ask, yeah. hey, could you help me? Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Welcome. All right. Any other topics for today? Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks all. Terrific. Thanks, everybody.